Hello. Well, today I find myself in the middle of a bit of an emergency repair, so uh, let's see if we can sort this problem out quickly. Uh, it's uh, a AG4700 uh, Panasonic Super VHS deck, um, and I was using it yesterday and it suffered from a head clog. Not an unusual problem, but I couldn't clear it. Uh, and I've cleaned the heads and cleaned the heads and cleaned the heads and getting absolutely nowhere. So I think the heads have failed. So uh, let's just see what the symptoms are and um, see if we can fix the problem by swapping the heads out. So here we have a head cleaner stick. These are a bit hard to get hold of now, as you can imagine. Nobody uses them anymore. So holding the head stick against the head, I'm going to rotate it carefully. And this will normally clean up the heads. And if they're bad, you'll actually get a streak of black contaminant on the head cleaner stick. And then you know you're in the right area. But it's not doing anything today, and I don't think it will. Ah, so all of a sudden it's working. I was going to change your heads out. Let's test it and see how it goes. Unfortunately, after a few minutes of playback, we went into the head clog again. If you look in picture search, you can see these bands of very little picture. There's some picture content in there, but very little. And this is the problem I keep on having with this machine. And you'd say, well, I'll just clean the heads again, but it gets me right back in the same position. I will clean the heads again, but uh, I don't think it's going to get us anywhere. As a alcohol, head cleaner stick. Nothing visible on the stick. No, we're not getting anywhere here. So, a few weeks ago, I was working on a another machine of the same model and I couldn't resolve some mechanical issues with it because I don't have the spare parts to uh, fix it with. So I'm going to have to uh, borrow the heads from this machine. So there's a head drum, part number VXP1747. First thing we need to do is uh, take the uh, earthing contact off the top. Well, it's a while since I've done one of these, so uh, let's see if I remember what to do. Three screws on the top of the head here. Let's find exactly the right screwdriver. It's all about the right screwdriver with this sort of job. Or comes the entire drum. So there's no special alignment required on this one. We just need to make sure that we uh, fit it back on so that the screw holes line up with these screw holes. So this is our hopefully good video head. Let's put it somewhere safe. And here's our target machine. Here's our suspect head. Now 
I have to be careful refitting this because there's plenty of opportunity to uh, clobber the video head tips when inserting this. If you don't uh, get this installed properly you can have problems with white flashes across the screen all the time even on good tapes and it's because you're getting a, a static build up between the uh, head drum, the top and lower parts and without this there's nowhere for that static to dissipate. Shall we try it? Now of course you should and I may go over this with uh, an oscilloscope and check the FM envelope uh, but it might be that it's clearly so perfect as to not need it. So that would involve finding the test points. I can't quite remember where they are on this machine. Uh, find the test points and set an oscilloscope up to look at the output from the heads. But first, let's see if it plays. If it doesn't, we've got bigger problems. Right, now picture search, don't get those big bands anymore. I didn't record everything I've just done, but after a few moments we went straight back to head clogging again and I came to the conclusion that heads were not the problem. So I've just swapped out the amplifier board here. So all that is is a screw each end and a ribbon connector at the top. So let's see if it is now reliable and all that's inside this amplifier board a sprinkler capacitors and an IC at the top a few passive components and some amplifiers and switching circuitry underneath let's just show you that so most likely if this is the cause it's going to be a capacitor now the problem came back at least on two occasions when I inserted a Super VHS tape. So I will um, try a Super VHS tape now. So let's see if a Super VHS tape instigates the fault. That's fine. Back to the VHS. All fine. Okay, we'll do some more testing of that. And if that works, we'll have a look at the uh, amplifier board. Now, well, within a few moments, we'll be back here again. So, the fault's not in the head amplifier. What is going on? It's an electronic fault. I could swap out this entire board. I don't think I have much choice but to try that. Great. The whole socket came off the board instead of the plug coming out of the socket. I mean, that's just brilliant. The manufacturer really didn't think about making this unpluggable. 
They made it latch in so that you can't unplug it. That's just terrible. Now we've got a new problem I didn't need. Well, let's see if it keeps working. And a few minutes later, it's doing it again. So I've now replaced the head amplifier, the heads, and the entire main board here. And we're still in this mess. Well, I'm going to fit the um, good parts into the other machine, get that one basically reassembled, and then come back here and have another think. Having reassembled the... Uh, second machine, the one that doesn't properly work and so has been offering up parts for this one. Um, I'm going to just put this one back together again. This one's this needs trying out and I wouldn't be surprised if it works now because it's just had a chance to cool down and it seems to be, I suspect, a thermal problem with electronics. So if I try it now It might work for a little while. Yes, you see. So we have a thermal problem. But it's not on this board and it's not a head amplifier. Weird. OK, let the fault come back again and uh, look at it some more. Well, that only took a few seconds. Let's do something like switch off the time base corrector, which is on a separate board underneath. No, that's nothing to do with it, I don't believe. It changes the effect, but it's not fixed it. Let's see what's under the head drum. Means taking the deck out. Okay, this is the underside of the head drum. That includes the drum motor. but also the connections out to the head amplifier. So potentially some amplification in there. Let's see if I can get the access I need by taking the bottom off. Probably should have tried that earlier. Now I'm going to take the bottom off and see if I can get to the bottom of the um, lower drum. Yes, I should have done this earlier. So there's the lower drum. Right, I can apply some freezer spray to various parts of that to see if we can cure and instigate the fault. So firstly, just make sure that we're still where we think we are. Haha. <laughs> you can't quite see the screen now, can you? But fault has um, temporarily disappeared and comes back. So let's try a little freezer in there. No.
again. The other possibility is there's a fault in here that I don't think so. That's the time-based circuit, I believe. Let's look in the time base circuit. Never never looked in this before. Pretty sure it's a time base circuit in here. There's bound to be loads of capacitors on the other side of that board, isn't there? I really don't see this being anything to do with the time-based corrector, but since the time-based corrector is relatively easy to swap over, I've just got the one from the other machine here. Very unlikely to help, but, you know, give it a whirl. Well, it's working at the moment, but being a thermal problem, It'll doubtless come back, so we'll try it again a little bit later. No, well, as expected, uh, changing the uh, time-based corrector didn't solve the problem. It, the problem came back just a few minutes later. So I've decided to swap out the lower drum. This is the lower drum from the spare machine, and it's actually no harder, really, than just changing the upper drum. So you take off the earth thing bracket at the top, undo one connector at the back, um, remove the amplifier, and then there's just these three screws, and that's all there is to it. So swapping the lower drum is nowhere near as scary as it is on some machines. Well, it's been running now for around about 49 minutes, uh, and it's still working fine. So it looks like we may have solved the problem, and it was some sort of thermal issue in the lower drum. That is very unusual. Let's reassemble the machine. Now this is the um, machine which uh, provided the spare parts, but it's not scrap. This machine has a fault with uh, an idler in here, but I believe that's the only fault it has. So I'm going to uh, still have a go at repairing it later. And I actually do have a scrap lower drum. So this is the upper and lower drum. We know the upper drum's good on this, but we have this strange thermal fault on the lower drum. So. Uh, We'll have a quick look at that in a moment, I think. And then if you remember, this is the head amplifier that connects to there. This ribbon cable goes on the top. Now, installation of this was really easy. There's just three screws, uh, one, two, three, underneath, go through the deck. So what I think I'll do is we'll take the upper drum off and we'll just have a look inside and see if we can get some idea of where the fault might lie in here. I don't think this is going to be repairable. I don't need to since I have a scrap one. But it's just such an unusual fault. Thermally open circuiting one of the video heads. I mean, that is just absurdly weird. But it is right because the other machine that the other drum was fitted into is now run for, oh, must be about 20 hours of tape it's run. And it's absolutely fine. So it's definitely been fixed. So let's move this out of the way and have a closer look at this thing. I'll set you up so you can see it better. So here's the good upper drum fitted to this troublesome lower drum. Let's uh, take them apart and see what's going on. So the way this works is we have lots of video heads. <laughs> so why so many heads? Well, some are for um, long play operations, some are for trick functions, some are hi-fi heads. So a normal, if you like, video recorder in the olden days would have had two video heads on a drum. Should we see if we can count how many of these video heads are actually connected up here? So each pair of these that are wired up, I think, is a video head. One, two, 
nothing there. Three, nothing there. No, something there. Four, nothing there. Five, six, not wired up. Is that seven video heads in all? I'm not entirely sure. Something like that. So, there are a number of windings in the inside of this rotary transformer here. And they correspond to windings on the lower drum. As we can see here. How many of those are there? I can't see all the way down to the bottom. It looks like about six or seven. Looks about right. And one of those, somewhere along the line, is going open circuit when the drum has been running for a few moments. So it could be just an open circuit, or it could be there's some electronics in here. Now, of course, some of the electronics in the bottom here are concerned with the drum motor. So here we have this big IC here. As a power IC, that's clearly concerned with the motor drive. But some of this may be concerned with pickup from the video heads, or they may just be connections. Can we work it out? This part, I think, rotates when it's lifted up. I may be wrong. But when those screws fit into here, that will pull up and rotate. So I think the magnets are pulling it down and stopping it from rotating now. Am I correct about that? Not sure. So we can't see the top of that PCB very well. I think that's just got the motor windings. So I think the transformer connections are these. You can just about see, I think. And they go under this metal screening can. Maybe we should take a look in the screening can. If I desolder that, we can see where those transformer connections come out. So here I believe are the transformer connections. These contacts. Did they just go straight out to the conductors, connector? Yes, they come straight out to the conne uh, connector here. And the one right next to this number four here is a classic dry joint. Let me show you that under a microscope. I'll refit this screening can. I think I may uh, go over the other contacts of some solder too, just to be on the safe side. Now I can reassemble the drum and fit it to the machine and know that that's no longer an issue. Well, that's it. I don't suppose anyone saw that one coming. What appeared to be a head clogging issue was actually caused by a dry joint in the lower drum connector. I mean, that's unusual. Uh, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something. Um, and do please remember to like, share and especially subscribe. And I'll do lots more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.